Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to live from NCCE this wonderful March day. It's wonderful to have you with us today. We are so thrilled to have the amazing Kelly McNeil with us. Kelly is, uh, and uh, she works for Digital Promise. She's a learning experience designer. Uh, she's got, I love playful professional development. I just love that. And that's kind of what we're talking about today, right, Kelly? We're talking about playful development, playful yep. prompt. And yep. Kelly and I had a great time. We were on a, a LinkedIn uh, session, LinkedIn live session last week, talking about uh, harnessing the power of the digital world to um, improve your peer-to-peer -peer relationships. So, but I am so excited about this. So Kelly, thank you for being with us and tell us all about how we can playfully use AI. Thank you so much, Tammy. And yes, we did have a great time last week. So um, I think we are going to put that link in the chat if you all want to check out that um, uh, video at some point in time. But yeah, just a little bit more about me. Um, I'm an avid gamer, streamer, uh, mom, and an EDD student. So those are kind of like my top bullet points. So I was putting this, I was thinking, oh, is this like my level of importance? But as Tammy mentioned, um, I am a learning experience designer with Digital Promise, which is an amazing position where I get to work with lots of educators developing um, professional development experiences and playful professional development is actually my dissertation focus, um, specifically with games in the classroom, digital games. Uh, I Previously was curriculum and teacher PD developer for emerging technology with Arizona State University. I've also been in the classroom. I was a computer science and makerspace teacher. I put my socials up there, but I believe they are also going to be sharing the socials in the chat. Um, I'm just so happy to be here. So grateful that Tammy asked me to come and talk to you all about some playful ways to use AI and specifically Microsoft Designer. So first of all, what is Microsoft Designer? Um, many of you maybe have heard of this before, have already you know, played with it, have seen it, have used it. Essentially, it is an AI image generator um, that you can use for designs. You can make stickers. They have a brand kit. They are rapidly changing things with this software, uh, I would say, maybe on a daily basis, but every week, if you go in, you might find something new. Um, and as educators, uh, you can probably relate edu educational technology, things change at a pretty rapid pace. What I love about Microsoft Designer, uh, particularly, is that it is free to use. We don't know if that is going to continue through the foreseeable future. I don't work for Microsoft. I have no idea, but right now it's free. And so while it is, um, a lot of us at Digital Promise have been sharing it and playing uh, specifically with teaching folks about generative AI because um, it's a really easy, fun way to do that. So I want to talk about some of the ways that you can use it. Um, I mentioned uh, brand building. So you can actually build an entire brand. If you are a vlogger or a, do they still have bloggers, blogger or a blogger, or if you have just your brand and your presence, a lot of teachers now, a lot of educators, you know, have um, built themselves up with their blogs and their, their YouTubes. Uh, Tammy, I'm sure has done the same. So if you go in here, you can just essentially type in a little bit of a description and it will present for you a font style. It will present um, the colors for you and it will give you some descriptions about that. And I have a screenshot where I was playing with it earlier to show you later. Another way to use it. Um, so if any of you on here are instructional uh, coaches or instructional technologists and you are responsible for doing uh, PD for teachers, I love using it for, um, I don't like using the, the term PD. I typically call things, you'll hear me use learning experience design a lot because to me it is an experience and it is up to the individual if they actually develop from it. Also traditional PD in my mind is um, very much the whole like sit and get, even me doing this for 20 minutes is very um, outside of my norm. I'm typically in workshops. I'm very hands-on with my educators and we're kind of like doing things alongside each other. So 
I have used this before. I primarily um, do online professional development and learning experiences, um, sometimes face to face, but I'm online because I support educators all across the US. And so this little example that I have posted here on this slide is actually a showcase I did with the HP Teaching Fellows, which Tammy is um, an alumni and one of our senior fellows in that program. But we had a showcase where um, about 20 or so educators were all online at the same time. I um, used Miro to sort of organize what we were doing. And I had been scouring Microsoft, the website, to see if there were any ideas on using this designer tool. And at the time, I went to try to find this video. It's It doesn't exist anymore. It was this really emotional holiday video that was an artist who sat down and asked folks who were walking past in the city to describe their like a holiday favorite holiday and holiday masterpiece and she used designer to create images like just in a matter of moments that these um people who were walking around could see and it was just a nice little two minute video i went in and was able to um create my own prompt template. And that's one of the really powerful things you can do with Microsoft Designer. And I took a screenshot because as I was playing with it today, this is new. They actually guide you through how to design a prompt as a template. When I did it, my method for EdTech is really just like jumping in hands on playing. So when I say playful learning, like I don't think that you can break anything and I just jump in and play with it. But as the folks at Microsoft had seen this power of being able to create these, these templates, they decided to add some more instructions to it. So it walks you step by step how you can make your own template. And so I made a template for all of these educators. And I basically had like a five minute session where I was like, okay, everyone is going to right now try to use AI. And there were several of them in there who had never done it, who had never tried it before. And within a matter of a few minutes, they all had uh, a little holiday card that they put in there. And I, I was able to grab their images and drop them into the Miro board in real time. So it was just a really um, easy, low uh, barriers to entry to just kind of introduce teachers to um, using generative AI. It didn't have to be anything fancy like mid journey or any of those tools. The other picture in the upper right hand corner was another little like icebreaker I did where I had given them a character prompt. I love character prompts. There's so many on Microsoft Designer and I had them just do like a teacher self portrait uh, in the character. And so that's one of the teachers in one of my programs. And then of course, student projects. So I'm not in the classroom anymore. I don't get to always do hands-on things with students anymore, but I can tell you I have done so many things in the classroom before where I definitely would have used this. Um, I've done narrative storytelling and like coding and game design and to have students be able to make their own stickers, make their like they in business or entrepreneur class, you know, they could have a, um, a podcast. A lot of students are doing podcasts now and just like build their brand with it. Um, I see a lot of use in like English language arts. Uh, I just think that there's a lot of fun things. I'm sure those of you that are out there in the classroom, I, I've seen, I I follow everyone on social so I can see the amazing things. Uh, another one of our HP Teaching Fellow alumni, Renee Dawson, and Tammy, I was actually gonna ask you about this. So I'm, I might ask you in the Q&A if you remember this, but she had some sort of assignment with like, a monster. I remember one with like monsters and one with like sandwiches. So I don't know the full story, but there's just so many open ended creative things that you can do um, with your students. So my question to you is, how will you use it? Um, and this is just a collection of uh, my folder for all of the actual images that I have from designer is really full. This is not even this is a very, very small percentage. Um, the one in the bottom left with my name, that was one that popped up recently on X. And um, I have that prompt actually in the resources. One thing I wanted to point out here, though, um, if you look at and you see the upper left hand um, computer sticker that I did, I don't know if you notice anything there um, with the letters, but this is something that is happens when you are trying to do text 
in generative AI, it doesn't always quite capture what you want. And so sometimes you have to regenerate. So I went ahead and downloaded that. I made that sticker today. I wanted to make a, like a laptop sticker for NCCE. Uh, but as you can see, it added an extra C. And sometimes when I do my name, Kelly, it adds an extra L. And then my, my gamer handle, my handle for when I stream educational games is EDU Gamer Gal. And you can see in that one, like it, it missed the A, but sometimes it gets it. So if you generate an image and it's not what you want, just try again and sometimes try again and usually it'll, it'll get there. Okay, so what we are actually here for is to explore some prompts. So I thought what I would do is just explore some of these prompts with you, show them to you um, online and live. Uh, I, I will go over in the next slide all the different resources where I actually find these prompts. But essentially, it's, it's by following everyone on socials. It's by um, tabbing. There's an unlocked Microsoft website and it's by uh, bookmarking the actual Microsoft designer site because they update it so frequently and have things on there. But I just thought that we would play with some of these. So the first one in the upper right, the 3D avatar creator. I have it hyperlinked in that presentation, which I'll share at the end. But then this is right here, what this actually looks like. And so one of the things I love to do, so I like to stream and I guess I could see comments. So I could join the chat. I don't, I don't wanna join the chat, but I can see if you all type in there. I like to ask people what they wanna put in here and what, what they wanna actually see. Um, so what you can see in these fields, this is what the prompt that was actually created. If you click edit entire prompt, you're able to, to edit the entire thing. And then when I was telling you about the share button, if you click share, this is now where you get a tutorial um, where you actually would highlight the pieces that you want to customize or you want whoever it is you're sharing it with to customize. You click add custom field and that's where it adds it. And then it actually provides you with that link. But we're just going to stick with theirs and I'm going to refresh this so I've got the highlights. And if anyone has anything, and this is kind of like Mad Libs that they want to put in here, uh, let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and do woman. The wearing. So my little trick with wearing, because, you know, you're creating all these characters. Maybe they don't really look like you, but I... Um, I like to wear dresses a lot. And this dress in particular, this like red floral dress that I have is one that I've worn to several ed tech conferences. And it's in one of my, um, my headshot from CSTA conference a couple years ago. So I kind of latched onto this red floral dress as like my, my little characteristic character feature that I, that I wear. So I will put red floral dress. Oh, I could share this with you. This is Microsoft Designer. Let me. I will drop it in the back, back room chat. It's a really long link. And Tammy, I don't know if it says connect your. I can't join the chat, but Tammy, are you able to drop that link that I just dropped? Okay, she dropped it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a long link. I don't know why they're, I, I guess you could go. So if you were, if you were designing one for um, a PD and you wanted to put it into a PD, then you could go into like bit.ly or something to shorten the URL. But it actually, you can see in the URL, it has the entire prompt in that URL. Um, so I'm going to do this a little differently. I, I, I I'm not going to do the same one. I'm going to see this. She is wearing a, oh, you know what we'll do? Okay, so. Oh, you only see the presentation? You can't actually see typing into the, um, let me see. Can you see it now? I saw Shannon said that. I think that I had to uh, switch the tabs. You should be able to see the um, the Microsoft designer. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Awesome. 
All right, so we're doing a claymation style woman. I'm going to have her wearing a black alien wear hoodie because I want to see if the logos come out. This is another thing you can do if you are part of, um, you know, MIEE, if you are part of some sort of um, ed tech organization or something else, um, then you can get logos to come up in here. So I will caution, you know, there are uh, copyright issues since some of AI is sort of the wild west right now. There aren't a lot of um, regulations with things. So definitely look into that. Another thing that I will point out before I finish this regarding the copyright, when I get to the end of this presentation, I have linked a folder for you that is for a presentation that I did with two of my colleagues, uh, one at Digital Promise and one of them was one of our HP teaching fellows. We did this at FETC and it was about two hours. So I couldn't cram all the two, I'm working to take my part into the 20 minutes, but Generative AI has just so many different things about it. And I actually linked that presentation and all of those resources. So you can read a little more about the copyrights. You can read about really refining prompts and you can read about um, all of the different links that we have there and different ways to brainstorm. But I'm just jumping right in. So I have another funny thing I'll mention with the eyes. So. I always thought my eyes were hazel because they're sort of like this bluish, greenish, brownish. And I'm like, oh, that's hazel. And then one day someone told me it's actually partial heterochromia. And I had to look that up and I did. And I was like, you're right. But I've actually tried to do partial heterochromia eyes. It doesn't get that. So sometimes I put gray, but I, you know what? I'm going to try it and let's see what happens. Okay. And then my hair is typically brown, but I got a biolage. I don't know if I said that right, but I got these little like blonde highlights quite a, a while back. And so now I actually tell it blonde highlighted hair. I usually wear my hair down, not up. Um, and the, the example I did ponytail, but I'm going to put, because they had French braid and a loose wavy style. Now let's see how that is. She is holding a, I'm gonna hold a laptop. And in front of a, hmm, I'm just gonna put computer desk. Let's see what happens. We click generate. Oh, it's not working. See, this is what happens when you try to do something live too. Oh, and I can't edit that. I should edit that with, I'm gonna change this. We'll see if it works. Also, sometimes when I'm generating images, I will get a message that comes back and says, you know, your prompt, you know, has been flagged for some reason. There are some words that it seems to be very sensitive to. And the words that I've put in there have not been even, I don't think, really offensive words, but just something for you to be aware of if you're going to use this in your classroom with your students. Um, it does have delays sometimes and it does, you know, have certain things. There we go. Okay. So it, it interpreted partial. It, it, it's, oh, so this is the first time I've actually seen almost partial heterochromia. And I download almost all of them. I like that one. That's cute. You can also then go in and click create design and actually add more to it by using this. So um, that's a really cool feature. Isn't it, isn't it, Clinton? I think it's really fun. All right, so that is one image that we created with a prompt. And I'm going to share with you, this one is has been a favorite. So I'm gonna change this. Uh, let me make sure you all can see this one now. Okay. So <laughs> this, I'm gonna drop this one in the chat as well. This is the Funko Pop. So I don't know if any of you collect Funko Pops or have Funko Pops. Um, I, I really only have the one, I have two. I have two behind me. I like Pokemon, so I have a Caterpie and a Sylveon up on my uh, shelf up there. But um, this Funko Pop, fun story. We were having a get together last year at 
I think it was ISTE. Tammy, I'm pretty sure you were there. It was for the HP Teaching Fellows. And um, the gentleman who cre created this prompt, I met him there. So he was working with um, Microsoft for a while, Microsoft EDU. So he is super creative. He's working with another play-based company now. I can't remember what it is, but he's the original designer of this prompt. His name is Stephen Reed. And um, his looked so great. And like the entire web just was, like went crazy over this one. So this one is really fun to turn yourself into a Funko prompt. So I'm going to do mine. Funko figure of a woman smiling called Kelly McNeil wearing a, I'll do, I'll do the same. I'll do the same. Um, the black alien wear hoodie again. Oh, wearing a, well, so then there's a hoodie here. So then you gotta like get creative and figure out all the different things you're wearing. A uh, white tank top, a, or if you're like, I don't want all this stuff, I could just click edit prompt and just go in here and just like, edit without having the restraints of those fields, which is, I think, what I did on this before. So, because all I want is just, um, I do want some jeans, though, and blue jeans. Uh, we'll just put a comma. So, blue jeans and, okay, I don't want a shaved head and a shaved beard. I'm going to do brown hair with blonde highlights. I don't know if he did his eye color in it. Oh, you don't do eye colors on Funko. They have like the, the black eyes. Inside and outside limited edition green and yellow. Here you get to pick your favorite colors. So I will do for this one teal and purple. And then Digital Druid is one of his little handles. So I'm going to actually put EDU Gamer Gal on mine. Okay, so that's a quick one. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it, if it generates. And on the main Microsoft designer page, you'll also see a ton of not character prompts. There are mostly other sorts of prompts um, to get you started. Cool. Yeah. Now it didn't get the EDU gamer out like at all. It's like got because <laughs> I did a mashup of like Alienware and EDU gamer out, so it didn't really get it. But it's still pretty cool. It's cool that you can do it. All right, and we will do one more. I think we're doing all right on time before we get to our resources and our Q and A. The last one is a Lego minifigure. I'm gonna pull this up here. And the Lego minifigure was one that, um, I'm gonna drop that in the chat for Demi, was circling around where to get the prompts. So Tammy is dropping the prompts right now in the chat that I'm, um, the ones that I'm actually sharing. But you can, at the end of my presentation, I'm gonna share it and it's got, a. first of all, it's got a Padlet that has like a ton of prompt links. And then I've linked to just the three that I'm showing you here, these three character ones. And I've also pointed to a lot of different places with a, with other prompts. Um, so this specific prompt, this is for a Lego limited edition. And this is a really basic one because there was one that came out for Christmas and I was looking at it before and the Christmas one just had a bunch of it. So I actually edited that prompt and then made this prompt today. So we're going to do this one, a limited edition Lego female with brown and blonde hair. I'm going to try the partial header of Chromia again. I want to see what comes up. Although most Lego minifigs have black eyes, I would say. Uh, and let's see how it does with the black alien wear hoodie. I need to put some pants on and blue jeans and sneaker style to the feet. Let's see what we get. 
Also, as you're generating your images, I really love the little tips that come up because it it, it like gives you hints about how to explore with different prompts. And there's really good tips in there. So I like reading the tips while I'm waiting for my, my image to be generated. Oh, I'm sorry that the links are too long for you too. Um, they are because they are all... Um, I didn't think about uh, shortening those. I, I should have done that ahead of time. But here's our minifigure. And it kind of did. It did like brownish eyes here. Um, isn't that just amazing how quickly that happened? So much fun. Awesome. All right. Well, let me go back to this tab. And all right, so where to find these prompts and more resources? So Tammy has a link to this Canva presentation and all of these links are hyperlinked in this presentation. So the top one is there's actually, like I said, one of the best places to find different things is on the Microsoft Designer site itself. So there is the Microsoft Designer and Image Creator, they are in the same. Social media, that link right there actually links you to, I, I just saw on the Microsoft Designer Twitter today, the it was like five different character style types and it was really fun so there was claymation there was steampunk there was a um like fruit so it was really cool the presentation with lots of resources so that will take you to a box link it should take you to a box powerpoint presentation uh i think that it's like 80 slides so it was myself uh, my colleague starry and portia who also works with digital promise and my colleague tavis bragg who is an hp teaching fellow and he is in canada um I highly recommend, I believe their socials are probably linked in that presentation. If you wanted to reach out to them and ask them about AI, they they know a ton. And there are a lot of resources in there for you to like brainstorm and have ideas. Um, and then the four hyperlinks below that, the Lego minifigure, the 3D avatar character, the Funko Pop. I also included the name design because that one just popped up on Twitter just a couple days ago. So um, I played with that, but didn't play with it on screen. And uh, you can click on each of those and actually play with all of those prompts. So um, I believe that is right to the end there. And I just wanted to open it up for any Q&A that we might have had. Yeah, we've been we've been trying to get that into there. I, I just shortened it, and I don't know if uh, Mike, maybe you can get this into chat. I used a, a Bitly. Sorry, Kelly. Um, oh no, that's okay that you use Bitly. I should have I should have shortened them myself. I didn't think about how long they were and that it wouldn't have worked to drop it. So it's it's Bitly uh, b i t dot l y slash Kelly. McNeil resources with the uppercases on the K, the M, N, and R. But Michael, I just put that in private chat. So if Mike, you can pop that up. Um, this is amazing. Everybody is just going nuts over your prompts. The There is a question though. We noticed that when you were showing the prompts, it, it reminds me of a Mad Libs, you know, where you've got the fields. Yep. Mm -hmm. How do you create that so you can share your prompt with someone else and they can have the same fun doing that? Yeah, I will actually go back and show you kind of step by step how we do that. So I need Perfect. to click on one of these to pull that up. I'm going to pull up this one. Let's see here. Because now that I've seen the Barbie movie, I want to try a Barbie one. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. All right. Well, let's let's do it together. Let's build it together. Okay. So I'll show you how to do it. So first of all, when you I'll start from scratch. So if okay. you just go to designer, you're going to go to designer.microsoft.com. Mm -hmm. One thing I will let you all know about Microsoft Designer, you do have to like sign up, sign in. And an, a weird, interesting thing, if you try to use an organizational account, it, it won't actually let you use it. And so I don't actually use my, um, uh, I use my own personal Outlook account, which I just made up with Gmail. It was completely free. I don't actually even access that. So um, that's how you need to sign in. But we go to image creator, we click generate. 
and it's still stuck on my other one. But typically when you go in here, it would be either blank or it would have your last one. Um, if you have a prompt that's in there, you're going to click edit entire prompt. And then you'll see that it becomes a paragraph without the field selection. So, Timmy, do you have what you want to call this? Is oh, this God. a is it, we want to make a Barbie? Sure, let's make a Barbie. Okay, do we want a limited edition Barbie? Uh, I don't know. Do I look like a limited edition one? <laughs> yeah, a limited edition. But I think we should put. I'm I'm gonna do. We could do career Barbie. Okay, career Barbie. That's good. But, Since we've got a teacher, huh? Right. But what you noticed is that I actually, um, and actually, this is, so my thought here is that they can change the the career part. Okay. But Are you I'll typing you in do. right now? I'm typing it. Yeah. Can you see? Oh, you can't see it. No, we can't. Can now, now we can. Okay. Yes, now we can. I have to. I have to keep clicking. I forget it's not actually sharing my screen. It's just sharing like a specific tab. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Well, let me go back then since it was not sharing from the get-go. Okay. So we're on designer. Right. We're going to click generate on image creator. Okay. This prompt is what's stuck in there. So I'm going to click edit. And now you see it all just becomes. Now um, you have to share that part of it because we're still. Oh. There you go. Now we can see it. So when I clicked on that, it actually changed tabs again. Yep. Got it. All right. Okay. So limited edition. Career Barbie. All right. With blonde shoulder length hair with bangs and glasses. And and let's be descriptive. What kind of glasses? Like Ooh, large, small, um, what like uh, wide plastic rimmed glasses? I don't know glasses? what shape these are called. Are they cat? I can't see. Yeah, it's put cat's eye. That's good. That they're okay. close. They're a little bigger, but yeah, cat's eye glasses and pearl earrings. Wearing an NCCE jacket, blue jacket. So for NCCE, because it's probably not in like the the oh, database as like a logo, we can use text. So wearing a what what? How did you describe your jacket again? Uh, a um, um <coughs> outdoor jacket, uh, outdoor sporty jacket, maybe. What a color? Blue, royal blue. Blue, a oh, I like it. Royal blue outdoor sporting jacket with the text. Nice. NCCE. NCCE. Just like yeah. that. It's terrible with spelling, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Sometimes you have I to know. do it a couple of times. Yeah. I uh, it's better if you repeat things a couple of times. Oh, interesting. Anyway. And, uh, and, what, and pearl earrings. Pearl earrings. We got the pearl earrings. And yeah. what, like black pants, brown pants? What what color pants you got? Black pants with black shoes. Black uh, pants. Holding, holding a surface computer <laughs> they call those laptops i think they yeah sure tap pad lip pad okay cool all right so all this right. is what we've got so before we generate right if we want to create this for someone else to be able to edit it we're going to click share okay. and you'll actually see it's like telling you examples of okay. what to actually how they can modify it so we're going to click continue so now it's telling you to select the fields that you want other people to change so if we wanted for example career because maybe someone wants teacher mm -hmm. barbie or someone wants dentist barbie or or astronaut uh -huh. or okay. whatever we'll click add custom field so they can change that uh, -huh. uh we definitely want them to be able to change the hair so right. we'll highlight that and that'll be a custom field. Uh, and then with bang, so then they can right. edit that. Um, this will be an edit of the item, custom item right here. Yep. Large, wide, add custom field. And then we'll highlight the pearl earrings. Oops. Oh, that's ridiculously easy, isn't it? Right. And uh, wearing a 
this is a custom field. Uh, yeah. This is a custom field. Black pants, black shoes, holding a Microsoft Surface laptop. Yep. All right. Okay. Cool. So then you click next. Now I have the link. So uh -huh. I'll share it with you in chat. I know that it's going to be too long, as you can see, as I just put oh, it in yeah. there. YouTube, but it's there now and we can add it to the presentation and now we're actually going to generate and see what we get oh and look you can actually see now that it's turned oh, no. into prompts so let's see what let's see what we get oh we learned something i love learning new things it's fun when you're on social media it, it, with your pln right everybody there was like a period of time where everyone was doing the funko and everyone yeah, was yeah. doing it right there was yeah. fun to look at him. And Stephen Reed is a maniac. I love him. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Ah! Yay! It's good. It's it's so right. Look it's at so that. Right. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm going to download these for you and send them to you. Oh, I would love that. Oh, this has just been terrific. <laughs> we learned how to share prompts, which is even more fun because now we can create something and send it to our students, right? So love um trying to see if there are any other questions oh you're sweet john pauls and clinton look at you too <laughs> <laughs> they're just saying this is amazing yeah it is amazing so um kelly thank you so much for your time and your talent and sharing your gifts and your amazing presentation with us where everyone's inspired that i can see so thank you for your time and uh, shout out to uh, John Pauls. I think John Pauls is up for an award for Magic AI Educator of the Year, right? Oh, so congratulations. Yeah, so vote for John Pauls. And I see Clinton is here and Clinton is our guest next month. So looking forward to that as well. Kelly, again, our thanks for being here with on live from NCCE. Everyone, thank you for your time sharing with us and see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.